So, getting back to the lesson. Tonight's lesson was a little different and tonight's video is going to be different because it's going to be about how do you teach little kids. So this is post-game analysis and critique on teaching methodology or teaching pedag pedagogy, if I pronounce that word, pedagogy. I, I, probably, I probably butchered the word <laughs> and I made National Honor Society with academic scholarship and vocabulary is my specialty, but I'm not exact. I'd rather be honest with you. If you screw it up, you screw it up. So I probably screwed it up, but uh, chime in on the comments below if it is pronounced pedagogy or pedagogy. <laughs> I probably pronounce it pedagogy, but I think if memory serves me right, I think it's actually pronounced pedagogy. Um, if I stand corrected, put it in the comments below, let our viewers know how do you pronounce that word. Uh, it means teaching methods or the way you're supposed to teach. P-E-D-A, I believe the spelling is A, P-E-P -E like, like uh, Patrick, E D A G O G Y. Pedagogy or pedagogy. Honestly, I'm so freaking sleep deprived right now. I couldn't tell you which one is absolute 100% correct, but that's kind of irrelevant. We're, we're getting sidetracked here when we start talking about do you pronounce your words exactly the way they're supposed to be pronounced? There's a lot of words in this world that people pronounce differently from place to place. Uh, a good example is English. The way we pronounce words in America, English is different than Great Britain. If you go to any video, the way people talk in like London, England, England, Great Britain, some, not all, but some of the words have a different meaning between American English usage and Great Britain English usage. Uh, also, some of the words are pronounced distinctively different or, or distinctively differently. Now, going back to the lesson, I would hold a piece up and call it the matching game. And I would tell them, do these two pieces match? And then you take and you put these two pieces and you play with the children, like with the three-year-old Colt, the five-year-old Trinity, when you're just getting them to remember the pieces, you do something like this. You hold a bishop and you put one over here and you say, that piece right there looks just like that. Grab that piece. They're gonna pick it up. You're gonna pick up your piece and you go like this and move them around. Try to use humor and comedy and say, these are the same. See? The same. They're the same. They're called bishops. They're the bishop. I got a bishop. You got a bishop. Then you can do like this and you can say, are these the same? Why not? They're different. Why? Is this one, you can put them like this and say, this one is short and this one is tall. What's different about this one? This one's short, this one's tall. I know, time out, I know there's gonna be teachers and educators, people with a degree in early childhood education, they're gonna say <laughs> things like, you're spoon feeding them, you're making it too easy. I teach kids as little as three years old. So what works for the kids that you have 
is one way, one method, what works for the kids that I get, like tonight, the kids that I got that I worked with, that is just a different way of getting there. Like, yeah, you're spoon feeding them, but you don't know the concepts and ideas that's in this kid's head. How do you know if a three-year-old even knows what the word short is and the word tall? And yeah, we could, we could go out here and we could put like, we could put a king and we could show contrasting colors and we could say short, tall, short, tall. You know what's gonna happen with a three-year-old? I'm gonna say, what piece is this? It's the short one. <laughs> and then <coughs> later, when I say this, when I grab, I'll just take an example. I grab another one and I say, we got it sitting right there for instance, and I say, show me the pond. Because earlier I kept saying the short one, the short one. Now, when the kid says, uh, I don't know, uh, the kid just does this. Because you, you have introduced the word short as an identifier, okay, with a three year old. So, it's better you keep saying the pawn. This is the pawn. This is a king. Don't show, look, short, tall. Short, tall. Because now the kid knows that anything below this is short. So, you, you said tall. Now, let's say you get a bishop, and we're just doing for the sake of argument. You put this on here, the kid now knows any piece shorter than the king is called short. So you go up to the kid and you say, what is this one called? Short, short. You could go to the kid and say, show me a short one. The kid's going to go like this, the short one. If that's the one you've done the comparison on, bishop and king. <coughs> it wouldn't matter. If I knock him out of the way and I put a rook in here, but you're going to get confusing when you get here, especially to a three-year-old. And especially maybe if you put them on the other side, because from the kid's eyesight, and I, and I don't know without the kid being here, but I'm going to guess Colt was probably around in here somewhere. He's looking down and you're doing it like this, you might as well have this sitting over here because that kid might just be seeing the rook. And I guarantee you, if you got a tall piece like the king and you got a little pawn the same color, it is guaranteed 90% of the time with a queen blocking them, eyesight, where's the pawn? The kid goes, <laughs> and the kid has no idea. He's three years old, he has no idea. Because you kept saying short. In other words, instead of naming pieces and getting them to identify pieces, you've brought in what some educators would believe to be a more latter development stage which is comparison and contrast. You just want to do the matching game. Are these the same or not the same? Don't even say different. Just say, say something like, these are the same. See, they look the same. And say, these don't look the same. Well, at first you just do color and you say, see, See, these are the same color, white, 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 same color. The color, when you're trying to say color, like a little kid three years old, you say color, these are white, these are black, 
and these are the same color so they go on this side and get them to first put all the pieces over there and get them put all the black pieces over here you naturally would not have the board turn this way if you're over there you would have the board turn like this for Trinity and Colt the three-year-old and the five-year-old you would have Jaden as your helper and you would have the pieces like here and then you have all the white on one side all the black on the other and no this is not correct actually if you want to get technical the way the board is take these off uh, take that off now for the sticklers that want to go all technical on us we could say that We can say they're the same color bishop, dark square, same pawn row, same kings. Kings have opposition right now. Um, and you could switch it. You could say that's your first move. We're not here to sit here and argue and, and get into semantics and all that. We're going to get sidetracked. But, and it doesn't matter if you put it like this. You, you could put it like this when they're in check. Because remember, when you're first introducing the pieces, that kid is just learning the game. They need to know what the piece is first. Don't even say, oh, wait a minute, uh, time out, mister. Uh, teacher, teacher, time out, time out. Uh, you can't do that, you can't do that, because he's in check. <coughs> do like I did, don't argue with him. Encourage him and say thank you. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna teach them that later. They gotta know what the pieces are first and they gotta know what side they go on because they gotta know what side, not even how to set up the board. But see, like with H and A, then yes, this would be the white side. But the way I do it, and I don't really care if they've got this here and here and the king's in check, just say, say something like uh, say okay put your pieces anywhere on this on the first two rows put them anywhere like Fisher random or chess 960 yeah you could have a bishop in the corner in chess 960 you could start out with both bishops in the corner literally or like this, literally. That's Fisher Random. We're not here to teach Fisher Random. We're here to teach normal, regular chess. That's it, okay? We got plenty of time. We're only sitting about 20 to 10. Now, what you do is first, even say, even with a pawn, say, don't even put pawns take take pawns off and just say put all your pieces on the back row put them put them anywhere i, I don't care where just put them where it's, it's okay just put them anywhere okay because you're just teaching white goes on one side black goes on the other and that's why earlier you saw me with the board turned around like this, like that, okay? And you could easily, you could easily switch it, like say it's this way, okay? They're all on the correct colors, white side, black side. You could switch them if I were here and Jaden was right there, I would tell Jaden, okay, you get white, I get black, you put all yours on your side. I'm going to put all mine on my side. So I put all of these back here, and then when we get 
to the pawns and we put some more pawns out here on the board, then we say, grab the pieces that match your color. You got white, I got black. So I'm gonna take a black one. Now take all the pawns and start setting them up on the second row, the next row, the, the row right here, this one. That's your row and set your white pieces over there, okay? And then when you're introducing the board, that's when you go back and you say, wait a minute, oh no, wait a minute, and play dumb on purpose, play dumb on purpose, and say, uh, oh no, wait a minute, oh no, what did we do? Oh crap, and purposely play dumb, but make it fun for them. You don't have to play dumb. Now, as I was saying, you have the board turned and you tell them clear the board. Now you tell them your letters, you got letters on the bottom and you got to have letter A when you're white, it's got to be over there. So we're going to turn the board. These are all numbers. Don't say, don't, don't waste your time and say these are all numbers and these are letters. So can we do numbers? No. If I was doing it with Colt, a three-year-old, I would introduce letters and numbers. Maybe with Jaden, five years old, I would say these are what? These are not letters, they are numbers. And we got to have letters. So do we turn it? We still got numbers. You could easily change it up and say, when you're here, you could say a statement instead of a question and say, uh, if we turn it, it's going to still be numbers. But if we turn it a little bit, are these letters or numbers? Well, you got to make sure that the kid knows what is a letter and what is a number. So you turn it around and you say, oh, now we got it right. I knew it. We got it right. And you can introduce like the white squares. Make sure the kid knows left and right. With Colt, he's three years old. He probably doesn't know left and right. He probably doesn't know numbers. He probably doesn't know letters. So with a little kid, you do what I did. You just let him play. Just let them move the pieces around. Let them have fun. For the first time, the first lesson, this was probably their first lesson, let them enjoy themselves. Let the kid be a kid, okay? Oh my God. Just let the kid be a kid. Let the kid play. Let the kid have fun. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to go, oh no. Yeah. Oh no! So, and you can roll this back. It'll. That's my fault. The way I had it rolled up. Now, that's good enough. We'll fix it when I get home. But you want to introduce the letters, okay, because the way I teach chess, when you have it turned and you say white on the right, when it's Jaden who is eight years old, I'm gonna say white square on the right because it automatically puts the letters on the bottom. And you gotta make sure the kid knows the alphabet what is a uh, what it what is a letter? You could also do one that I have a lot of luck with, which is a number one. For white, there is a number one. So if you turn it when you're teaching little children, you turn it and you say number one, two, three, four. What's that number? 
then you know the kid at least can count to five. So then you have the kid count the rest of the numbers, they get to eight, and you say, you go all the way across, this is row eight. You gotta have row one on your side. So, you turn it, don't, don't ask them, don't say, turn it, can you turn it? You can do that if you're with Trinity, if you're with a five-year-old, okay? But at Jaden's age, then you introduce row A1, row H1, okay? And that's why your numbers are like this. When the kid is playing black, you got to say, you need row 8 on your side, okay? You need a white square in the corner. When they're white, you say, you need, you go like this. Say they got the board backwards, right? White on the right. That, that's all great. Yeah, white on the right. Or light on the right. Problem. Problem. I've been teaching chess a long time. Problem. When you say light on the right or white on the right, the kid thinks they got it right. Because you're telling the kid, uh, white square on the right, light colored square on the right, I got it right, I got it right. You're trying to encourage the kid and you're trying to build on little successes. So you start out by saying white always has number one. The numbers, number one always starts on white side. So whoever has white, like obviously this guy over here has black. Give me a king. King, hold on. King, king. Yeah, checkers, king me. Okay, now, they always start with, and this is mostly going out for people that want to teach preschoolers. If you've got a group of kids and you want to teach three, four, and five-year-olds how to play chess, watch what we do at PC Chess Club. We're going to be doing a bunch of videos and we're going to show you how to teach a three-year-old and even a two-year-old how to play chess. I mean two years old how to play a full game of chess. They know what check is, two years old. They know what check is, checkmate, en passant, well, check, checkmate, stalemate, on facade, they know what all that is. At two years old, two, you hear me? Two. So there's a different way that you go about it. And if they start at two, when they get to be Jaden's age, eight years old, they've had six years of training. Most kids are learning chess when they're six, seven, eight years old. Not at two and three. We don't want them turned out, turn them out like robots. I need to get a drink. Stay right there. I don't care. I care less. Now, yeah, it looks all cluttered, dude. Is that a sign of your mind, a cluttered mind? No, it's a sign of staying focused. Ignore the fluff and all the stuff around you. Zero in on the game. Listen up. Time out. Focus. Focus. Pay attention. Focus. Okay, now, when you're trying to set it up, just the board, no pieces, you might put a king, you might put some little white pieces off to the side, farther so their elbow doesn't go. Okay, I'm turning it, wait a minute, I'm turning it, and the hand or the arm or elbow, whatever, knocks the pieces over. Maybe. Maybe it's like this, and the kid goes up and knocks a piece on the floor. Keep the pieces out of the way. 
and just tell them, say, you're white, I'm black. Or you got the white side, I got the black side. You got the white pieces, I got the black pieces. You get the idea, right? So when you're teaching the colors, say white has to, and they're gonna be white. You're watching the video, the kid that you're teaching is gonna start out with the white pieces so they know how to set up the board. Say, uh, whoever's got white, you got white, okay? In this video, in this lesson, you got white, okay? So listen up, you got white. Now, you tell them and go slow, like I'm going now. I can do this lesson in 30 seconds, tops, 20 seconds, even 10 seconds. Bam, just like that, no problem. And this thing's probably dragged on 20 or 30 minutes at least, but we're trying to show, like with Cole, a three-year-old, you go real slow, let them have fun. What are you building it on? What is your basis? F-U-N, fun. Your basis is not logic and reason. Your basis is not uh, syntax and semantics. Your basis, basis is not, well, we're gonna teach end game and, and we're gonna do this thing where you said uh, the pawns, you know, and you, you got a one pawn or you both got a pawn or you got them over here or whatever and you're doing this opposition thing and that's an in-game principle and yak, 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 blah, 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 blah. No. And this is just raw, unscripted. This is not rehearsed. <laughs> this is not rehearsed at all, man. This video, checking my time, we're almost sitting at 10. This is completely, totally raw, unscripted. This is what you see is what you get as is it is what it is i need to take this shirt off put that shirt on says it is what it is okay so you're getting to see as real as it gets as honest as it gets i'm calling it as i see it and i'm telling you not years not years and you usually don't see me go on camera it doesn't mean I'm pissed. Oh, he must be pissed. He's going on camera. He must be pissed. <laughs> I'm not pissed. It's not, oh, sure, dude, that's passive aggressive. No, I'm not pissed. If I was pissed, I'd say, I am pissed. I am freaking pissed. You would know about it. In other words, you would know about it. So, no, I'm not pissed. I am coming to you as some would say, bearing your soul, bearing your heart, you're just being honest, you're being upfront with people, and you're showing them what works. You're showing them not days, weeks, months, years, you're showing them, or in this case, I am showing you, not years, I'm showing you decades of doing chess. I've been doing chess since 1996. I've been teaching chess since 1996. Well, actually been doing chess a little bit before that, but really started to get into it in about, uh, I believe it was January 1995 or maybe December 1994, somewhere in there. And if you count from January 1995 until January 2005, that's 10 years, 2015, that's 10, 16, 17, that's 22 years. 10 years being a decade, that is, yeah, two decades of teaching chess. Yeah, well, yeah, because I started teaching in about, yeah, that's about right. About 1996 is when I actually started teaching chess. I, I was teaching a little bit, but not consistently. I wasn't, like, teaching, like, a lot. 1996 on, I was teaching chess like a freaking madman. I was teaching a lot of chess. 
I taught probably, I would say, a hundred people a month, at least a hundred people a month. A hundred different people every month. And that was way back in 95. And I've taught thousands of people since then. So I've worked with all ages, from old elderly people that's going to be in a nursing home, <laughs> got out of a nursing home, went to a nursing home and got out, you know, they regain their independence. Uh, people with Alzheimer's, people with dementia, little kids like Colt, three years old. Um, I've tried with some two-year-olds. Mm, you really got to be patient and you really got to change all your methods with two and three-year-olds. So, let's go back to this lesson at hand. Now, when you're introducing the numbers and the letters, you got to tell white you need to have the number one on your side. Look down here at your number. What number is that? Can you count the fingers on, can you count your fingers? How many fingers is this? <coughs> what you might do is, is hold one finger and say, <laughs> how many fingers is this? <laughs> one. You know you have a problem if the kid is five years old like Trinity and you say, how many fingers is this? And they say, <laughs> okay, that's fine. If they, they should know numbers by the time they're five. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not here to chew anybody out. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just saying by the time they're five, they should know numbers. They should at least know a number one. They probably do. But what you can do is you can say, um, how many is this? And they're going to probably say one. If they say, I don't know, you say, this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then start the numbers. Go like this, one, that's a number one, two, that's a number two, then go back. Uh, some say, you know, it's not necessarily being redundant, but to recapitulate, to go back, to, to revisit what you did. If you just showed them two numbers, a number one and a number two, then what you would do is you would go, this is one, this is two, this is two. You would go back and you would say a repeat. So... We're going to do the number again. We're going to go, this is one, this is two. And then go backwards. Okay, two and one. And one and two. And two and one. And go two, one. And, and do repeats. Go one, two. One, two. One, two. You don't have to go like that. You can go slow, you can say this is one, and you can even do it like this. You could say this is one, this is two, this is three. Here's a little trick you may not know. It's worked with me. I've had a lot of luck teaching the kids. I do like this. I say one pawn. Then I put another one and I say, can you count how many pawns? There's two, okay? So, if you got a kid over there, you move the board closer to the kid. If we had a little kid, like like Colt, or like, uh, what was her name, uh, Trinity, we would take, and we would turn this, We turn this and we would actually take this, fling that. Would it be better if I did comedy and said, 
We just do that. Because <laughs> that's just how we roll. <laughs> that's just how we roll at PC Chess Club. So that's just how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's just how we roll. Okay, back to the lesson at hand. Turn this around so the kid can see. And what you want to do is you want to take this little pawn and you want to put it down here. That's one, okay? Then you want to take this and put it here and say that's two. So when you're teaching numbers for the kid to count, use these eight pawns and say that's three. Then take these off and do it like this. This is one. Go up to here and say, this is two. Can you put two pawns on this row? And give them a couple of pawns. And if the kid goes here and here, and I know these are not the right size pieces for the board. I'm fully aware of that. I've been teaching chess for <laughs> over two decades. A long time, almost too long. I'm just kidding with you. But if the kid, if you're trying to teach a little kid like the kid Colt or the little uh, three-year-old Colt or the one we had, the five-year-old Trinity or even the eight-year-old Jaden, keep it fun and teach them. But don't, don't say, okay, uh, this is two because that's obviously four. So take that away and say, you know your numbers, right? So we have to only put how many is on that row. I'm gonna pick a number on here and you put how many pawns. And go ahead and put it like here. Scoot it up close so the kid has a little one. And you can even use these little tiny analysis sets to work with little kids. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take this piece and put it on number four. Put a pawn on row number four uh, just tell them their rows say all the ones with letters that's the letter row and these are the number row don't and I repeat don't introduce rank and file to a three year old and a five year old not yet not yet time out so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say you're, you want to give them some pawns Put them, either put them off to the side or put them down here in front so the kid has all the little pieces they need and say, okay, I got this on row number four. Can you put four pawns on this row? The kid may put the pawns like this all jammed together. The kid may put one here one here, one here. They may try to decorate their row. Don't fault them. They may put them like this on the colors, like that, and say, oh, I got them all on the colors. We'll get to that later in another lesson. Right now, we're just trying to get the kid to know the numbers. Like, I'm dealing with a three-year-old here. We had a three-year-old. We had a five-year-old girl. We had an eight-year-old boy. Eight-year-old boy was named Jaden. Five-year-old girl was named Trinity. Three-year-old boy was named Colt. My job as a chess teacher is to say, do you know the horse? This one is called the horse. I'm not going to tell a three-year-old and a five-year-old this is the knight. I'm going to say this is the horse, and then I'm going to say, because it looks like a horse, then I'm going to come in like I did in the video earlier, and I said, also the knight, it's called the knight. This is the horse, and they call it the knight. Can anybody say knight? That was a good lesson. I critique it myself, self-critique. I thought it was a really good lesson, all things considered, environment considered, or environment aside for what I was dealing with, the situation, the kids, the time involved, I thought it was a good lesson. They had fun, they enjoyed themselves, and 
they learn what the pieces are, what we did like matching. When you're learning to set up the board, it's called board orientation. How you orientate the board or the orientation of the board. Do you put numbers across the bottom and letters up the side? No. But the kid needs to know when you say white on the right or light on the right, the kid needs to know that white, like remember in the video, you're white or the kid you're teaching is white. Okay, you're gonna be sitting where I'm sitting. When you wanna teach your kid, or if you're a teacher in school and you're wanting to teach the kids, maybe you're a great, awesome teacher, but you've never taught chess, okay? You, never, you just haven't taught chess. And you say, well, it's complicated. I wanna work with the kids, but I wanna teach them slow, like you're doing. We're, we're dealing with preschoolers. I think that's a bit much for them. No, I've worked with preschoolers, worked, taught preschoolers for years. Oh my God, years, years, tons, tons, tons of kids. But, time out. We need to have a little powwow here. When you start out, you don't start out with all eight pawns. Take these pawns and set them aside and start out with only four, okay? Maybe start out with three. Like when they're little, like Colt, three years old, don't even start out with that if the kid doesn't know a number and the kid can't count. The kid's just going to have to learn how to count and the kid's just going to have to learn how do the pieces move. And what you can do is you can start like here. You could start with a pawn and say they go one and one and you can you can move your little take the king off board and say whoever gets their pawn more close wins so usually you start with a king right here and it's called the pawn game if you go to amazon or go to ebay there is a book, a uh, person that helped me, a mentor of sorts. I got a lot of help from a person named Grandmaster Lev Albert, and the book's written by Grandmaster Lev Albert. One of the best ones that you can get is his seven book series called Comprehensive Chess Course. Awesome, very awesome. For little kids, I would recommend what we use at PC Chess Club is uh, Square One by Bruce Pandolfini and also Lev Albert's book number one. You, you need the first book, not any of the others. You need the first book, book number one by Lev Albert, Comprehensive Chess Course. It's gonna introduce the pieces and it's called the Pawn Game. That was the first place I heard about it. They actually use it in Russia and whoever gets to the other side wins. Well, what you do is you say white goes first, but we play a modified version of the pawn game where we say whoever gets their pawn more ahead wins. But you got to move your king first. So they go here, they go here, white goes here, they go here, they go here, they go here. We tell them, you got to do something. You go like that. Well, you got to do something. They go back. What do you do? They usually move their pawn up because the, you can't stop them. So once this guy moves out of the way, if they get in the middle, walk up to the kids and go like this. And do this. And say, time out, time out. Nobody wins, nobody loses. Draw. It's a draw. 
the idea is at first when you introduce it you say the kings move here 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 uh, maybe they go here they go here they go here go here go here go here now he can't go here he has to go back when he does they move their pawn walk up to the children tip the kings over and do this time out and point to the kid don't touch the kid because there's a big touching thing going on and probably like not even if it's your kid if it's your biological kid don't grab their arm and raise them up and say winner because if the kid knows the concept of winner and loser the minute you raise their arm and you say winner because your pawn got more far ahead that's the idea whoever gets their pawn more far ahead wins you're going to instill in that kid winner so the kid over here is thinking oh great what am i i must be the loser i hate this game because i'm the loser no just do what i said where i don't know how this was i think it was like like this he was have to move or something we'll say he's like this um what you do is you say time out game over get their attention before you go up don't go up and say up winner loser don't do that no no don't do that that that's not good for the kid emotionally mentally or psychologically educationally no don't do that just tip the kings and say game over let them ask you why is the game over and you go back go back to earlier this imaginary line right here whoever gets the pawn more far to the other side whoever gets their pawn more far if it was like this tip the kings and say tip the kings and say time out game over game over when you're dealing with a five-year-old a four-year-old a three-year-old a uh, preschooler or kindergartner what we call pre-k or like uh, head start age all of your pre-k which is three fours and five-year-olds well five-year-olds technically are kindergartners but three and fours are pre-k pre-kindergartner so you just walk up and say time out game over set your pieces back up and let them go back when they ask you why or they look at you puzzled or you have their attention where you can explain it then you say whoever gets the pawn more far wins you want to win don't don't use a label don't label the kid winner and loser like up oh, game over winner you're the winner don't label the kid focus on winning not winner loser focus on being goal oriented the minute you say winner the other kid thinks i must be a loser so the minute you change the terms the terminology and you don't say winner loser you say this person wins you're trying we're trying to win this person got it and you can do it and you can get it you give encouragement later when the child is able to handle winning and losing then you can say winner 
the, the one that wins is called the winner. The one that loses is called the loser. Every game you have a winner and a loser. Okay? It doesn't mean the kid is a loser like a loser in life. Like, oh, kid, you can't play chess because you're such a loser. I don't care if the kid lost 10 games in a row. 10 damn games in a row. I don't care. Go over to the kid that lost. Okay? Like here. Black lost. And the other example we had, white lost, okay? So you wouldn't go up and say, uh, you're a loser, kid. You lost. We have a winner and a loser. You must be the loser. Loser! Don't do that. Give encouragement and say, you can win too. Don't even, don't, don't go up and say, game over and, uh, Winner, loser, go up and say, game over, this person won, you did good too, and you're going to do better, and you can do better next time, I am going to help you, and this person sitting here, like if you're sitting here teaching them, and you're sitting with them, and like say, I'm here with one kid, another parent is here with another kid, I'm going to say, this is your buddy, this is your partner, these are practice games, so you're supposed to be helping each other. So at PC Chess Club, stands for parents and children, we try to get the kids, if we can, we get parents and children, meaning we try to get a child and a parent, a child and a parent. Get the parents to participate or participatory action. Try to get the parents to bond with the kids over a game of chess and get the kids to encourage and help each other and get both parents to encourage and help the kid that lost. Don't belittle them. Don't say, oh, it's okay, kid. You can't help it. You're just a loser. Uh, maybe you're not cut out for this. Let's try something else. No. Go up instead and say, have the parent over there that lost encourage the kid and say, you'll do better. I'm going to help you. This parent over here is going to help you. The person, your buddy, that your little chess buddy, and we get rows of them, we assign them little buddies that they're gonna be paired up with each week or each night we do chess. So they might work with one kid for this month, next month they switch them around and work with another kid, or sometimes week to week. This week you're gonna work with this kid, next week you're gonna be matched up with another buddy that's your new friend, your new buddy, and you guys have fun and you help each other. So, you're going to play another game, and they're going to help you, okay? So, the parent sitting over here, say I'm the parent, right? I'm the, I'm the parent help the kid. I'm going to sit here and say, you won, but I want you to help them so they can win too. Now, do you see how we change it? It's no longer a label. It's not a title of winner versus loser. It is goal-oriented. It is a goal-oriented approach. And it is a goal focus. That, that's what you're focused on, the goal. Like goal. Your objective or your focus is that goal. That goal to win. It is goal-oriented or that's what you say is the orientation of your mindset. That is your mindset, your outlook, the kid's outlook on the game is I have a goal, I have an objective, I have a task. In that kid's mind, three, four, five years old, they just want to have fun. Maybe at maybe at four and five, the kid starts to learn what it means to win. At five, the kid knows pretty much what it means to win if you've worked with them. Or they're easier to respond to the concept or idea of 
what it means to win or winning and then you can slowly introduce like winner and loser <laughs> yeah yeah slowly so what happens is you got a kid over here that loses okay just set him up got a kid that loses okay you tip them over the kings and you say uh you leave this one standing up tip over the king and then knock them both over first and say time out game over um this person wins because they got their pawn more ahead okay so we'll put this the the one that wins we're gonna leave your king standing up the one that don't win or doesn't win it, it doesn't matter with kids if you say doesn't win or don't win you know it's not the time to have perfect grammar and say if you don't win I don't care if you go to the kid and say the one that don't want don't win or the one that doesn't win keep it simple and just say the one that wins your king stands up don't even go at first don't go there you remember that old saying don't go there don't even go into the one that wins your king stands up and the one that don't win or doesn't win uh your king lays flat like with Jaden, he went and he said die 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 i win i got the king i win i met the other guy that i don't know if he was the father stepfather or what and his name was Will. Uh, he said he knows how to play chess a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe he's tried to teach Jaden. Maybe Jaden's watched him play. Who knows?